shock lasers just basically one tapping people over the wall once you've got a few items under your belt. So Hope gonna lock that one in. And it feels like this fits Hope's style, right? He's very happy to be aggressive, to get up close and personal. So it feels like Zeri will be well within his wheelhouse. The Ergo we talked about, very likely for page one. This is the go-to if Wukong is banned. And we'll see where TT would go with this draft. You can go for supports early, maybe go for an AD carry to match up against the Zeri. But, I mean, there are options to go for solo lanes. So, we've seen so early solo lanes over the weeks. But, will be the Callista here for Pup? Yeah, I am I think it's a good answer. Something that can try and punish early. Still have the Renata open as well. If you want to try and take that on this next rotation. So, you get that incredibly strong bot side of the map. 369, got to go back towards his Gangplank though. And I'm curious if we actually get the Yumi here for JDG for missing. Um, traditionally, we'll see JDG take a jungler in this first rotation, though, just because they don't want Kanavi being put too far behind because he is such a big part of the early game. But we'll have to see if that is going to be the plan because he could go for the least in here if he wants to, but it could also go for that support pickup now just to solidify that bot. Yeah, I, I love seeing that like, for 369 as well, though. Like, it's just so much fun to watch him play that champion. He's so good at it. It's such a classic for him. Uh, Kanavi, similarly, going to go for a classic as well with the Lee Sin. Uh, just, I feel like Gangplank and Lee Sin are both like, almost mandatory that you have to be able to play them in LPL. Like, Lee Sin is like the LPL standard, but I feel like every LPL top laner plays Gangplank these days. Uh, over on the TT side, though, it's going to be the Renata Callista. Very powerful lane to lock in. Yeah, and we'll do well in the team fight against JDG. JDG quite short range, so you get a lot of value out of the hostile takeover. Um, also, I think the uh, fact that you're going to have the Gangplank go to try and slow down the Callista, like interrupt her attack speed, makes it a little bit more difficult for TT as well. So we'll have to see um, how they're going to try and deal with that. I think just adding in, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, a, again, like some sort of roaming pick here for Yukal so we can try and pressure down the spot side is going to be your best bet because you have an aggressive bot lane that you want to try and facilitate but you lose out in the jungle 3v3 so you need that mid laner to make sure you can actually win out here on TT side Karma going to be banned away as well as the Silas Let's see what TT going to go what what else they want to remove from this area like Yumi could be a good ban but no just going to go for the Alistar actually remove hard engage from this yeah, I, I think Yumi would be a great pick here for JDG, but it doesn't exactly scream to me a, a, a missing pick, right? As we said, like, missing does like to try and run around the map, tries to have um, uh, the ability to work with Kanavi quite a lot. Now, like, I think Yumi can facilitate that style, and we've seen it coming out from missing uh, before, but I definitely think, like, looking towards these more engage oriented picks could work out um, super well. Like, the Leona, especially with the Nautilus band away, even something like the Rakan, I think could work super well here. For a Rakan, that'd be certainly an exciting lane to watch. Uh, it can be tough against the Renata, though, like with their handshake yeah. just denying your entry. Uh, Gwent open and available, and Shaoshang considering just going for that as the pickup against this Gangplank. Uh, certainly just a very strong pick, and he will be able to go for that one. And now we need to see the support in the mid lane locked in for JDG. Yeah, I'm curious what Yago is going to go with. Um, I mean, the Ari has been his most played, the LeBlanc is next, and then we go down into the Azir. But I feel like having something that can try and play um, aggressive towards sides is probably going to be your best bet, because I imagine Yukal is going to be looking towards something like the Twist of Fate. Um, Ox was also talking recently about like how Ryze is starting to slip back in to the meta a little bit with uh, the buffs that he saw. So maybe we get Yagao going towards something like that. But I definitely think you want something that can provide a little bit of engage or setup and uh, it looks like Yagao just going to go straight towards Lissandra, regardless of the matchup. Just to be like, hey, look, we want something that can provide that lockdown, and Lissandra is a good option for that. Yeah, absolutely. You can make plays on the map. It, yes, it is a counter to Ari, but it's also a good pick in of itself, right? Especially alongside that Lee Sin, where you can set up the lead to kind of be the, the jungle carry. So the Yumi we talked about there, the Lissandra in priority and proactivity are the names of the game for JDG as a rise is locked in for Yukal to try and match that. Yeah, we just literally talked about uh, the rise and how he's starting to see a little bit more play. And I think that works out really well here for TT. The, the reason being that you actually, again, get to have that roam potential that we talked about, how um, the buffs to rise actually kind of helped him out quite a bit. Like the cooldown on his Q being reduced from five to six uh, wasn't a huge one because this Q gets reset off of like the 
the, the other abilities in his kit. But the spell flux uh, damage also increasing means he has good amount of um, push in the lane. And also that AP ratio being increased on that E as well means that he actually has a good amount of opportunity to roam around the map, find good moments where, especially like post six, we can actually influence them, uh, the bot side of the map and make sure that TT get the ball rolling. We'll see if they can get the ball rolling. And once again, it's always going to go back to that conversation with JDG of who can get the ball rolling because JDG, they go aggressive. They, JDG are like the epitome of that MLXG copy pasta, right? Where it's like... When we're ahead, we go in. When we're even, we go in. When we're behind, well, we need to go in so we can get ahead again. Like, uh, that's the TLDR version of it. But, like, JDG just want to go. They just want to fight all the time. And so, TT, they'll need to get ahead. They'll need to match JDG in that early game. Because I think if JDG do get that ball rolling and start to snowball, it's going to be very difficult for TT to be able to find a way back into this game. Because JDG, while they are aggressive, they're also good at playing the map correctly as well. Yeah, and I think that's the, the plan here. Like, if you can actually link up Yagao, Kanavi, start to look for invades, missing as well, being able to link up with that on the Yumi. Like, that's where I see JDG putting their pressure. The only thing downside for JDG is they don't have a huge amount of bot lane uh, presence to try and help them. Southwind and Puff should have good control of that lane. So, trying to look for dragons and these early object neutrals that we generally see JDG go for might be a struggle. And that is actually where we start to see JDG oftentimes fall behind because they are trying to push the uh, their presence on the map, trying to take as much as they can. But without the support of their team, sometimes JDG can get cut out. Sometimes they can, but not to start this game. TT going with the level one invade on the top side, but won't find an opportunity as 369 was just playing from the river for the time being. So just uh, going to be a standard level one in the end, even after that invade happening on the top side. And we'll see where these junglers are going to path as well. Looks like Kanavi going to be starting towards his red buff. We'll get a leash from his bottom lane as well. And a matching start from Beituan. So we could see the junglers clashing heads in that upper river once the crabs are up. I feel like a lot of this is going to be the mid lane focus for the junglers. I mean, Yagao, great setup, great lockdown on towards Yukal. Yukal actually in a similar boat because he does have the room prison. So I think we'll get to see a good amount of teams fighting for control of that mid lane. And once you do, both mid laners very good when they have access to the map. So we'll have to see if, uh, which team is going to be able to find that early advantage. Yeah, we'll have to see as Shaoshang not having fun against early game Gangplank here. <laughs> 369 just procking multiple passives and grasping every Q as well. Shaoshang uh, feeling the wrath of the Gangplank up there burning away. Um, as we'll see how that lane continues to pan out. Interestingly, Kanavi going for the red buff, going for the Raptor straight up towards his top side though. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually curious to see if uh, Beishwan now just decides to kind of do a bit of a loop-de-loop -loop because we hope burning that cleanse off that initial trade I mean, you have a big advantage now for a TT in that bot side. But Shaosheng, it's level two. Gets a good trade back onto 369, but might actually be caught out. Might be 369, trying to look juicy here. Hits level two, goes forward to start the players. Kanavi arrives, will find the slow. Remember, no flash available for Shaosheng. Running the Ignite TP, and Kanavi with some creative pathing makes a kill happen. Southwind flashes forward onto missing. That's a Yumi that can't jump on the shoulders. But the Ren doesn't come out from Puff in time. And Missing will survive. Yeah, everything blown by JDG in this bot side now, though. Flash for Hope. Double sums for Missing. This lane is a sitting duck if Aishwan can get down there. But already JDG are on the board. And you can already see, as you talked about, the path thing coming through from Kanavi, where he opted in towards a quick three camp. Does his red Raptors into the Grump. So he's able to hit that top side as soon as possible before that third wave crashes. And gets the kill on to Shaoshang. He certainly does. 200 gold lead. <laughs> so far for the side of JDG. Take another look at the gang. I mean, an attempt there from Shaoshang. There's not much more to say, though, other than Kanabi with some really creative pathing here to, to find another passage. Yeah, and that's the thing. Shaoshang had pushed the wave so deep that uh, the second wave so deep that he didn't really have the wave built up or the safety as to where he's positioned. So. Beishuan as well, a little bit slower in the clear towards the top side. He wasn't able to facilitate. So it's a nice reactive play from Kanavi to realize, hey, I can actually get this kill on top end. Now a creative play on the bottom side as Hope is caught out here. We'll just get taken down immediately, missing. 
Pops onto Kanavi's shoulders. Will be able to be protected there, but JDG's bottom lane just getting caught out. And exactly what we talked about for, for uh, JDG. Hope had already burnt all the sums, same with missing. So with that wave being pushed out, Kanavi was trying to get down there to facilitate them crashing that wave, get their first reset off. But late to the party, Beishwan shows up. A nice play from TT to punish. And it was TT finding an advantage. Beige one managing to match. And look at the difference in CS between the junglers as well. Kanavi on 20, Beige one on 37. And now with an even play on opposite sides of the map for the two junglers, it feels like Beige one actually finding himself a significant advantage in this early game in the jungle future. And that's the thing for Beige one trying to farm it out and get towards the later portion of the game as soon as possible is going to be great but for kanavi you need to have that early impact and he's going to try in the bot side is again waving an awful spot for hope and missing and kanavi going to see if he can punish as this wave is being pushed out yeah missing and hope trying to look juicy trying to bait this one out but puff and southwind aren't going for the bait they're not going to bite for now and kanavi just wasting his time here remember I mentioned how he was on 20 CS against 37. It's now 21 against 45. That lead is only getting bigger for Beige One. Yeah, and that's the thing. Kanavi is trying to make his presence known in the early stage, but it does have a cost. And that's what you're saying. Like, level of disadvantage here as well. We'll pick up the Caulfield's Warhammer and make his way back towards topside. Now, Kanavi falling behind obviously isn't ideal. But it's not the end of the world for JDG. You're still looking at like Hope, who's going to be great in the later portion of the game. Yagao, the potential start looking for roams, which honestly looks like he's starting to set up with getting control of Botside River. And you still got the super late game insurance of this gangplank. I keep my eyes on you, Cal, as well this game, because we've got two mid laners that can just force priority and roam. You know, we've got Rise versus Lissandra. This is a this is a matchup that's not about the 1v1. It's about how you can influence the map. And in the last series, we saw you, Cal, finally getting like on top of things you know having a really good series for himself having a couple of games even got an mvp in that series so i want to see really positive play from you cal here and i'd love to see him going towards that bottom lane now he's level six to try and find that advantage for both it has the cleanse available as well in case you get kanavi showing up in the lane but you do have to still be very careful that's one of the problems with Lissandra is that, like, do you cleanse the W? Well, if you don't, Kanavi's just going to uh, hop on to this Lissandra, make sure that he's able to get the uh, the damage that he needs down. And if you try and cleanse the W, well, then you still have the ult coming through from the Lissandra. That's why it's such a nuisance to try and deal with a lane like this, especially if the jungle's playing around it. But because Beishwan is level 6, he's got a decent advantage for himself. Kanavi actually has to be careful about trying to play around a lot of these lanes now in case... Uh, Beishwan shows up and can actually turn around the 2v2 or the 3v2. See if he can turn around, if he can find his way into those plays. Fairly quite early game though, for especially for a JDG game, uh, with not that much fighting aside from just in the lanes and the two junglers trying to find those advantages, but falling short, generally speaking, means we're in a fairly even situation with the gold just about dead even and uh, one Drake in favor of TT. But the south win. Desperately trying to force this wave in, but Kanavi shows up with a ward in Tribrush. We'll be able to clear that vision away. It means that this, this late this wave is in a bit of a compromised position for the bot lane of TT. Yukal though does that push, so now he's starting to lean down towards that bot side. You've even got Beishwan here as well. So a lot of focus as we talked about on this uh, bottom half of the map, especially when you've got the Gangplank and the Gwen in the top lane. You're not going to be seeing a huge amount of presence there. Yukal though. We'll actually get this push in just in time for a Rift Herald to spot on the top side. Xiao Shang has presence top, so we're just going to move over as TT towards that objective, but maybe look for the base. Oh, Kanavi, that's not the place you want to be. Ward hops and flashes. Gets himself out to safety, but that was a little too close for comfort. You can actually flash for that play as well as Southwind. So even though they got Kanavi's flash, it's actually a positive trade for JDG, all things considered. Yeah. But Herald is starting now by TT. Well. Yeah, that's going to be Baytron. Grabs the Herald at least. So, you know, I said all things are considered before, but I hadn't considered all things. Now that all <laughs> things are considered, it was definitely positive for TT. Yeah, it definitely is. And I think that's where I want to see if they can start to move this around the map now. You have the Rift Herald. Look to use it mid. Try and see if he can get that snowball rolling. And from that perspective, then, you should be in a relatively okay spot. To, um, to see if you can then start to crack open the, the bot side, get
get presence down towards Puff and Sentry. Yeah, we'll see. As uh, the junglers on a different page right now, as they're both on the top side, but can I just get a reset in here? Shadowing for the time being. Um, Shaoshang returns to the lane, has a big old wave to push in, and you can expect Patron to kind of hover around until that next wave is done. But actually, it looks like Shaoshang is going to be able to just push this one in. Yeah, and this is where, at least for JDG, if you can try and play it slow into that later portion of the game, you should be relatively okay. And um, again, like, you're going to have decent scaling coming through with Hope. You know, once it's three items, the poke is going to be absolutely insane. You've got decent gauge with Lissandra. Even having a 369 with this Gangplank should be good. I think TT can match a little bit with, uh, with the Gwen damage that can come through and also just how well South Wind scales. But a lot of their damage is like front loaded in towards like the early and mid game with the likes of the Rise and the Callista as well. Yeah, definitely feels like uh, they need to be making things happen fairly soon as Shaoshang used in a needlework. I guess just want to shove this wave in and maybe go for a reset, maybe go for a robe on the map. Just obviously doesn't want to be here anymore. I, I'm kind of surprised to see the ultimate used it that way. He had priority already. Yeah, I'm not exactly I sure. Not that long of a cooldown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but look, I, I think this is the problem that we've kind of seen from TT is that they have been a little bit inconsistent on to how they want to try and uh, push this game forward. Beishwan on the bot side now starting to move. Yukal doesn't have his Realm Warp yet. Um, but we'll just plonk down this Rift Held and try and get some gold. But, I mean, Kanavi's already here, but can't get behind to hit the eye. Oh, there oh, it is. Yes, he can. The Herald goes down. And a uh, bit of a disaster, honestly, for Beishwan and the gang. Herald found early. TT find themselves an advantage, and they can't actually convert it. Now it means gold still basically even in what we said about JDG. You know, it's this team that struggle when they fall behind, but amazing when they fall, when they get ahead. That was TT's opportunity to get them behind in the bottom lane. And I will say though, TT have a ton of control on this bot side still. Like the amount of wards that are in this position. Um, well, you can see Yaga clearing out one, but there's still one over by red buff. One hit hiding just the back of try. Like you have a lot of vision here for TT, especially with this next dragon coming up in 10 seconds. But... Uh, a little bit of a late reset coming through from TT means they won't be there just as the spawns. But it looks like JDG weren't really interested in looking for the play on bot side anyway. They want to try and go for a play on towards Shaoshang in the top lane. Yeah, Shaoshang up here alone versus the world. Has no CP, but he has Ignite and Needlework available. Yagao going to move in, but the W too late from Shaoshang means he's locked up here. Kicked back and look at all that damage coming down. I'm not even sure he actually got the Shroud off at any point. Yeah, I mean, it just came through so fast. TT, though, will trade over for the Dragon that we talked about on the bottom side. Plates going the way 369, and also that kill, though, going to help him out spectacularly. Cole about to pop two. I mean, 369 is about to get a massive influx of gold. That's going to be pretty scary for TT. Yeah, 369 with that kill in his pocket with a CS advantage and now opportunity to just get on those tower plates as well. Puff trying to do a similar thing on the bottom side. Yagao's been found in the jungle, has no ult, does have flash available. It doesn't even need it, just has the claw of doom to pull himself to safety. The rest of JDG grouping up mid right now as Patron and Southwind moving forward. Hope is oh. playing with fire on this one, hand shook back. Gets a bit of lightning out in the final chapter as well, Patron. Decides not to go the roll up. I thought he was going to go deep on that one. It would have been dicey. Uh, it's just going to be the fight over chickens here. There's not even an objective up there. We're just brawling. <laughs> yeah, and you can kind of see what we were talking about for JDG, though. Like, they try to put themselves in these precarious situations thinking, oh, you know, we've got members coming. We should be all right. But sometimes you just got to respect that, you know, TT might also have people there and hope feeling the worst for wear after that one. We'll still come down to collect the spot lane wave. Shaoshang, though, because 369 was called into action on the bottom side, gets some turret plates back. So it is actually a bit of a win for TT in just how much uh, JDG had to invest to try and make that play happen. Yeah, it feels like uh, they're trying so hard to, to make it happen. And we ultimately end up at a neutral state in terms of gold, a positive state for TT in terms of the dragons. But a Herald coming up in 40 seconds, Dagda. TT already 
with the AD carry in the mid lane here. You see Yukal's in bot lane, but he has a TP available. Ziagao gets a handshake, but just pushed away in the end. Could be another Herald for TT if they can make it happen, but JDG are moving over. Yeah, but you still have Yukal on the bot side with teleport, so TT actually playing off of these summoner spells a lot better, so Yukal should get bot turret here. TT need to back away from this jungle, though, because JDG are just looking to push their advantage while Yukal is still pushing boss. Ganavi, 369, moving away from the top side. This will be a uh, herald priority for JDG. They are definitely trying to force the issue on this one. As Yukal just pushes the wave in the bottom side. Now level 11, so has the improved Realm Warp. TT now muscling their way into the river. And it feels tense here, Dagdo. It feels like a bit of a stalemate between the two teams. But JDG willing to commit to starting this herald off. It feels like JDG aren't sure what they're supposed to be doing. Nobody pushing against uh, Yukal on the bot side because they know he has TP in the Realm Warp. Whereas no one on JDG actually has anything to match. So TT playing around that well, but not being able to get mid prio means that Kanabi will get this uh, Rift Herald on the top side. So it's a definite kill on the Terra bot for TT. Whereas JDG will have to see if they can be a bit more successful with this Rift Herald than TT were on the last. Yeah, I, I'm a little confused by that one, to be honest. It felt like TT were playing it better uh, with, you know, having Yukal in the side lane and then just... That was it. Yukal stopped pushing. Yeah. They didn't contest the river. JDG get themselves the Herald. So it's what it is. Alts coming down up at the top side of Shaoshang tries to find the all in. Yukal using that TP that we talked about to steal a minion away from Shaoshang, and that's about it. He also took the ghost there, but now the play. Oh, flash onto Hope at the bottom side. The rent stacking on up, but actually the kick back from Kanavi. And it's an AD carry for AD carry in the end. But with a bonus kill coming through onto missing, it's a two for one in favor of TT. I mean, TT invested the teleport there from Shaoshang and a huge amount else coming in. So with missing going down, it kind of helps out there for TT, especially with the control they can now get for Dragon in a minute. But it does mean that for 369, he has push in top side, should be able to get that top tier one. But as I say that, he's actually going to back away and Shaoshang should be able to defend it with the clearance of the... the creeps but we'll see this here hope again just had a bit too far forward the cleanse is nice to try and help out but not going to be enough and there's just tt collapsing from all sides so jdg try to get it as soon as they can but unfortunately lose two in the mix we certainly do and now we have to i mean i'm loving this one because of how bloody close this whole thing is this feels a little messy definitely doesn't feel like perfect league of legends from either team but tt have got the two drakes and with another one coming up in 20 seconds with jdg trying to scrap with them but not actually winning out quite as much as you maybe would have expected in this kind of matchup tt now it feels like have a bit of an advantage as they move towards this drake yagao oh, yeah, thinks he's hiding but he's on a ward the whole time he buys his second with his ulti with an ever frost there yagao will fall and that will surely be drake for tt yeah, it should be Drake, but they have to try and defend their mid here. The Rift Tower play will just get the charge as 369 is pushing in the top side. But, I mean, this is JDG just starting to get caught out consistently. And TT doing a pretty good job of, you know, now getting that third dragon, having a set win condition with this Hex Tech Dragon. But Gold still incredibly close in this game. Yeah, Gold is uh, a bit of a struggle for JDG, a team that... Like we said, they, they do really well when they find that lead. They're not managing to find their lead. Now down in Drake's as well. Feels like JDG. Not quite sure how to move forward with this one. Yagao obviously thought he, he thought he was invisible. He was not invisible. <laughs> Stands on the wall I mean, this, just gets caught out. This bot side jungle has not belonged to JDG since like five minutes, six minutes into the game. So I think for at this stage, Yagao really needs to make sure that he's sweeping every time he goes into that bot side. And uh, TT punished really well, but now, as you can see, we're starting to get 369 moving around the map. JDG want to make sure they can get this uh, mid terror, and with Gwen pushing top, Rise on his own in the bot side, should just get us. Base one manages to pull himself away there. Realm Walk comes on through as Yukal joins the fray. Big damage coming out from the Renata roll, actually. Everyone just was grouped up from JDG. It was like a cartoon fight where there's just a cloud of smoke and feet coming out in all directions. <laughs> Everyone just biffing and bashing each other. Uh, but ultimately, it'll just be a, a bit of a trade here. Xiaoshang managed to get a tier one of the top side as well. 
yeah, two for two in Terrors, but definitely the mid lane being a little bit more valuable here for JDG is um, Hope can always like push in mid, then start to teeter down towards the bot side. 369 as well, like always having the advantage of the cannon barrage means that you can generally outnumber people in side lane. So as long as JDG can push in mid, they can actually start to group up towards these sides. But TT now going to start to see if they can get some more of this deep vision that's been working out for them so well. And continue to hold river control and look towards this dragon in three minutes time. Yeah, three minutes. That's going to be potentially a deciding moment of this entire game unless JDG can find themselves some control here. But I have to say, Dagda, I'm impressed by TT. Like, I was coming in today saying, you know, they've actually looked pretty decent in recent series. You know, they've shown us that they have positives. But I was kind of like, you know... I was optimistic about maybe their split as a whole. I wasn't anticipating them being 20 minutes into game number one against JDG and managing to be dead even in gold and have a three Drake advantage. This is not a situation I envisaged. I will say with the way JDG have been playing, I'm not overly surprised. We talked about like consistently inconsistent. They tend to have one of these games every, um, every time they play. And for TT, I think there's still moments where they could have tried to push this game further. Especially with Yukal, we talked about him, like, having the Realm Warp, ability to play around bot side, looking for TPs, which we didn't really get to see. And I think that's why we're looking at the game so even. And for JDG, we said already, they have phenomenal late game scaling. So you have to be so careful as TT. Yeah, TT needs to be cautious. Still a minute and 50 until the Drake, though. So while JDG have control of the bottom side for now, it's just going to buy them this tower. It's not going to actually get the Drake for themselves. TT posturing around the Baron, but I don't think that's doable. Vision is there for JDG as well. As 369 grabs this tower, TT won't be able to answer in the mid lane. Yagao can just clear that wave. 369 is huge. Like, this guy, when he shows up at fights, we haven't really seen him, but those barrels are going to hurt. Collector already completed, and he hasn't even reset. So that's where I think we're going to see a huge amount of uh, uh, firepower coming through from JDG. Yeah, definitely going to be the case on that one. We'll see if they're going to be able to make it work, though. If they're going to be able to make these fights happen for themselves. Is that firepower going to be enough is the question. Two items finished off for Puff. And uh, look at Yukal, right? Just a split second away from stacking his Archangel. So close. And yet so far, three spells away. Dragon coming up in 50 seconds. And I'm just excited. I'm excited to see a 5v5 like that. I'm excited to see a bit of a brawl. Well, we're going to have to see if we get it because TT have actually been doing a lot of pinging over towards the Baron. So curious to see if TT are actually willing to fight for this next dragon or if they're actually just going to use it to take mid terror, maybe look for pressure on towards the Baron itself. Because for JDG, you don't have a huge amount of people that are great at face check. Yeah, it's a bit of a tough one for JDG, isn't it? This is one of the issues of having a Yumi, right? We, we regularly talk about this. Like LPL teams do rely on the hard engaged supports to be able to face check. So having a Yumi means that your jungler is the one that has to face check instead. But that means if they get caught, Smite is down. You fall behind. Yagao with a four-man route to start this fight off. Can a barrage onto everyone? TT being forced back, but still surviving for now. Yukal trying to round warp out. Will it be in time? No. Kanavi kicks him. And that's both carries down now. As JDG find an opportunity. We've been waiting all game to see who will find the gold lead and JDG, they just found it. And that was where TT could have abused the fact they had the dragons, but instead they get caught out. Now JDG get two kills themselves. They will get the dragon and TT can't really try and contest elsewhere on the map. So JDG, it took a while, but they're starting to see if they can come alive in this game. They just catch it on the replay here. Yago hiding this time on vision, <laughs> great engage gets directly on towards the back line. And I love the self lock up here from Yago as well, because he didn't know where that uh, bailout was gonna go down. So instead, just opts to get the slow on towards everyone, get damage across the board. It means when JDG show up, whoever doesn't have the bailout is the target. Yeah, exactly, right? Both able to uh, try and get some damage out in return, but just gets caught out in the end, the start and play. And then I love the kick from Kanavi. Onto Yukal, who's trying to run warp out, just belts him out of the realm warp and finishes the kill as well. So now 2,000 gold lead for JDG. And getting that Drake, but crucially, because TT were able to get those first three back to back, 
that's going to happen again for JDG. They're going to have to consistently perform at these Drake fights. I mean, I'm looking a little bit more confident at JDG, though. You've got two items now for Zeri. Hope going to be working towards that Infinity Edge fairly quickly. As we talked about, Gangplank, huge for 369. Already having the Collector and that Mortal Reminder completed. Now working up towards an Infinity Edge for himself as well. Like, this is where it starts to get real dicey for TT. And unfortunately for Shaosheng, because he was set behind early, he's really starting to hurt. He hasn't been able to farm side lanes. He's sitting 60 CS behind 369. Not even completed his second item yet. Like, this is where you don't have that, like, late game option for TT up and running yet. No, could be a tough one for TT when, like you say, not really online just yet. I mean, 25 minutes, just one item finish for Shaoshan. Yeah. That is really tough. Like, that, it's not often that you see a player as far behind as not finishing two items at the 25 minute mark. JDG, though, trying to pressure in the mid lane. Spatron moves in. Shaosheng with a deep TP. He wants to find those items we were just talking about, but he won't find it. He'll find Kanavi's foot in his face, and he's gone. I mean, we said he was behind. I didn't expect him to just get rinsed like that. Yeah, that realm warp really needed to come in to save the rest of TT as well, but JDG with that fight, they're looking over the Baron. They're still healthy. they still got a Yumi. Um, there's no real way that TT can try and contest this. Beishwan was sent packing in that last fight. Yeah, JDG now onto the Baron Yukal. Actually, getting Yagao to retreat from the play. Yagao's out of mana right here. Big laser over the wall. And Southwind and Beitron. Oh, we actually get a 50 50 this one. Yukal moving in. Threat coming out from TT Puff. Going forwards. We're going to 50 50 it. And it's going to be Kanavi in the pit to grab it. Southwind chunked on out as Yukal trying to tank for his team, but he doesn't have the health. And Beitron now trying to escape, but Kanavi's got the zoomies, and he's going to look for a Sonic Wave onto his next target here. Beitron trying to dodge, but won't find it. Sonic Wave comes on in. Kanavi still has kick available, as you say. Can he find it? Just misses the crowd. It could have been beautiful, but it's just a little shy. Xiao Shang, though, found another way to die. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at the end of that. Xiao Shang, yeah, unfortunately, does end up falling on... I was waiting. Kanavi, unfortunately, couldn't quite get the kick. JDG, though, still happy. Baron in their back pockets. They now have control. And remember what we said, as soon as JDG get control, that's where teams get scared because this team is so good at closing out these games. Yes, they are mid in hip down now. And it's feeling pretty good for JDG. This has not been the fastest, not the most aggressive game from them. But at the end of the day, they knew that they could play it safe for the first few drakes. They knew that they didn't have those advantages. But then they find their window and blow this game wide open. I mean, this is just mean. Are this we really going to show this one again? <laughs> this was yeah. ambitious from Shellshag, especially with the position that he's in. Um, and as you can see, there's just no real extra help coming through from JDG. Um, JDG don't really have big engage tools. You're kind of looking at like Southwind or creative positioning coming through for Yukal with the Realm Warp to actually set them up. But uh, unfortunately, there's Shaoshang just kind of running into his death as he tries to, to pincer the enemy team, but ends up being the one that gets slipped. Yeah, 8-4 on the scoreboard. 40 seconds until that next Drake. Maybe TT can find a miracle here. Oh my Because, God. you know, they got the three Drakes. Okay. I'm looking at on the left hand side of the screen. 5,000 gold difference. Oh for 369. That is, <laughs> that is absurd. Yeah, he's, he's relatively <laughs> strong. Relatively strong. Four items versus two. Four oh versus gosh. two in items on the top lane right there. That is. That is just disgusting. Uh, hope now getting damage onto the tower. I was thinking maybe there's a miracle steal available for TT on the on the soul here, but I don't think they're even going to be able to get near pit. I don't think Beach One no. is going to be allowed on that side of the map. I mean, they don't even care. They've got the Baron. Just going to keep pushing. You've got super creeps in the mid lane, and now you've got the wave here. And the siege from JDG is so strong with the poke from Hope and 369. Oh, jump ball from Southwind here, uh, but it's not gonna be all that hot <laughs> 369 gave one auto attack to hope and half his health bar disappeared. wait that was one auto yeah <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> all right yeah. well yeah you got to be careful of 369 on both teams it turns out wait a second look at this composition from tt actually with the renata able to make 369 batter hope and then baytron can get the resets 
JDG's advantage is actually TT's advantage. The mind control it's plays genius. are available. Oh my god, why be ahead when you can let them be ahead? And then you int from get them to int, take the win through that. It's genius. It's absolutely exactly. genius. But uh, unfortunately, the plan the plan for TT, they forgot about step two, which is, you know, kill them. Space run uh, gets a bailout, but he ain't getting no resale on this one. Pop will go down south win soon to follow. Oh, triple? As, uh, the rest triple? of the team get chased down. Oh, you're right. It's a triple as you can rub out. I thought that was the quadrant there, but 369 won't still be going. able to find He's it. Still Maybe going. he can find a fourth here. If he can, if it's early enough for the quadra, they could dive the fountain. Oh, oh it's denied. You had to stop watch. You had to ruin the fun. UCAL run warping as well to deny it. But hey, unofficial Penta. Unofficial Penta going out for 369. What a game he has had on his gangplank. A 5k gold leader about half an hour ago. <laughs> Beautifully done. I need to see what this gold difference at the end of that game was. Because he was like more than 5,000 gold ahead and then got five kills. <laughs> like he is going to be so monstrous at the end of that game. But yeah, I mean, look. Might as well pop up the graphic now. MVP 369. We talked about him getting a ton of this early gold. I mean, he said he was going to be monstrous. I don't think I quite expected the 9 and 0 gangplank to be the uh, the eventual score that 369 was going to get, though. Yeah, you could tell how strong he was by how much he did to hope after the hostile takeover. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was, oh, my God. That was something else. That was something else. But, uh, yeah, great game for 369. Great game from JDG. Little disappointing for TT that they had such a good early game. They managed to match everything. That was what we wanted. But then one fight goes awry and the entire game just falls apart. Yeah. Like it was, it was just unfortunate for TT. Again, I think they did a reasonably good job of getting these early neutral objectives like the dragon. We saw them get the rift out, but they just didn't do enough with them once they got them like we saw that initial rift herald was a complete dud where kanavi was in position to turn around the play on the bot side we look at the dragons like the advantage of early dragons is you get to control then how the other team operates because they the other team has to go and fight at the dragon but if you can then like play off towards the side lane play off towards baron suddenly you can then have a ton of opportunities to actually figure out a different strategy on the map. But we just never really saw TT use it. And unfortunately, they just fell behind after that last uh, dragon fight. Yeah, fell behind and then uh, never, ever got back on top of that horse. When JDG are ahead, they finished the game up. That is just that's just what they do. If there's one yeah. thing you could say about JDG is when they have that lead, they will move forwards with it. So TT... Now with their work cut out in this series as well, they were already an underdog, but now they are 1-0 down. But the positive news for TT is JDG, they're the kind of team that very rarely wins 2-0. <laughs> they, they'll <laughs> usually find a way to lose a game, so there's hope yet for TT. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous that that was the fun game that we get from JDG, because yeah. it wasn't exactly confident until the end. Um the early game was a bit messy. Kanavi, as we kind of highlighted, falling very far behind in the early stages, despite getting the good gank off in the top lane. Um, Hope as well, getting caught out quite a bit in that bottom mid lane. So we'll have to see. Um, But yeah, I'm a, I feel like that was the game where TT could have taken over, but they just weren't able to. And having the resources to do it, but just not actually committing to it. Kanavi actually with 100% kill participation as well. I wouldn't have expected that kind of impressive game from Kanabi, honestly, after how badly the early game went, like how much of an impact he was able to have. And the kick that was so close, so close yeah. to be the kick of the week there when uh, everyone was kind of clustered up and the target just landed just shy on the south side of the play. Uh, could have been beautiful, but not quite. Either way, very nice game coming out from 369. As you can see, 36% of the team's damage. Not really that surprising after what we saw during those team fights. <laughs> I'm actually curious. I've never thought about this before. Does damage percent done count if it's to your allies? Huh. Like if you get Renata ult, does it count? So the way that kill credit works is Renata gets the kill if you kill yeah. one of your teammates. So I so it's just Renata damage. If, yeah, that's my thought. Is that Renata's damage probably? I don't know. Off the charts, uh, yeah. We'll have to test it. We'll jump into practice <laughs> tool in the break. In the meantime, go get yourselves a coffee, guys. We've got another game coming your way 